Okay, folks, so we are out here. This is just a really straightforward job. It's like six or seven dead fir trees. I've just got to drop a couple big ones right here. That one and that one are pretty big. Most of them are just like stubby things, but I am going to be trying out the still hexa chain. I did a review on the chain, kind of cutting some cookies, but here I'm going to just fall some trees with it. It's just a little dirt. It's, it's still sharp. It's just a little dirty from cutting some wood. It's on my MS661, the Gordy ported west coast saw so i haven't really actually used it very much it just kind of been uh, tinkered with it a little bit but this is the new hexa chain it's got a fancy sort of hexagonal file sort of mimics a square ground tooth but you'll you you do notice like it's really hard to zoom in with my phone on this chainsaw chain look at the rakers on it they like swoop out to the side everything's kind of offset it's kind of interesting i don't know if you can tell anyways the rakers kind of swoop out in this weird way on a normal chain the rakers are, go straight up and on this hexa chain they kind of swoop out so anyways just some dead trees gonna fall them down the hill down only just the way i like it this is issaquah washington and let's see how this bad boy cuts i always let my saw warm up for about a minute you know once i fire it up I just let it idle for a little while just to warm it all up i've had this saw for a few years i feel like it's it's starting to for the first time the last few months starting to get a little harder to start starting to maybe lose a little power i think it maybe needs a tune-up or something it's ran so strong for years but it's i don't know it's starting to not quite feel as good as it used to <laughs> These are my Hoffman boots. They're actually pretty uncomfortable. They're pretty stiff, but I cannot believe the traction that you get wearing corks, even though they're pretty uncomfortable. Um, it's just amazing how much better you can walk on this stuff. So this chain, it, it, these are dead, but it feels like it's cutting really fast. It's kind of aggressive, kind of not so smooth, but really fast. So I got a Dutchman right there. I'm short on my cut, right? See that? So, but what I want to do is I want to see with round chain, cleaning up these Dutchmans is hard. Like you, you stick your saw in here and it just wants to slide. Square ground chain, it cuts in like a laser beam. Every time you tweak the saw, it just makes a new curve. So the square chain's nice for cleaning up these Dutchmans. Let's see how the hexa chain does. But what's interesting is the round chain, it's easier to stay in your curve with the round chain. So like on the back cut, it's with the square ground, it's easier to get off. Kind of blessing and a curse. I don't know. Let's see if I can dig in on the side right here. actually felt kind of like the round chain that was actually not very easy to cut into the slope side of it my, my footing's a little awkward too could be user error but it definitely it felt like round chain trying to you know i had to try multiple times to start carving into that piece of wood which is kind of interesting could be in my head but i don't know it's hard to factor in the human error to this stuff you know <laughs> Let's go. 
tarnation did my wedge go? <laughs> like, went down in this little hole right here. Like a perfect little, ah! There you go. <laughs> I find something in that hole. <sighs> Whew, steep. This one actually leans back a little bit. Um, I gotta get it right there. I'm just gonna get hung up. Let's do the back cut first. If I were just like out totally in the woods, I'd just cut this little cedar down, but it's actually somebody's backyard. I don't know if sometimes I don't like that. Probably buzz us in half just so it's a little more stable. Honestly, this saw is cutting super good. I'm actually really liking this, this chain. This one's actually a little awkward. I mean, it's kind of a big fur, pretty tall. Right behind this one, I really don't want to lodge it in that, so I gotta shoot it in between these two. It's actually kind of a tight shot. Uh, and all the way to the back side, so I'll definitely need to wedge it over. I'm a little nervous, actually. I really don't want to hit that tree. Well, I think we'll be okay. This is awkward, all the chips, like, can be a little awkward to cut. <laughs> I try to throttle a little bit, want, want, and it's uh, uh, the chains are just grabbing. And I know it's not the rakers are super low because they're at 30 thousandths. And a tree like this, I'd usually have them at like 50 thousandths on a square ground chain. So definitely a more aggressive chain. It cuts fast, but you know, I just want to want, want, just want to tickle it a little bit, but the tooth is on the wood and it's not pulling through. I gotta pull my saw out a little bit. Definitely grabby. <laughs> See, there, there's my line, you know, I'm aiming my saw. There's the, the gunning sights, right? I gotta shoot between these two trees. I really don't wanna tangle up in that, so I'm tempted to shoot it way over here, but then I tangled up in that tree, so you really have to shoot the gap. Those are the gunning sights, you know? That's what I'm doing, trying to aim right for those two. And it's actually like, the tree's gonna be a little this way, just a hair. And it bends up a little bit at the top, so it's actually gonna be like, fall a little like this. Just barely. But if the tree leans hard and you're aiming it here, you know, you gotta think like, this is where the butt's gonna be. But if it's leaning hard, the butt, the top's gonna be over there. But... chatter this is really aggressive that is wah, 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 wah. it's almost like the bigger the wood gets the less the chain likes it <laughs> I think it's fine. So there's the line. It should be good. See, this side's real steep and stuff. So I've cut this side all the way up first. I got my 10% or whatever, probably less than 10%, but I got this side cut up first. So now what I'll do is I'll finish the cut on this side because I can more easily get away from the tree from over here. And what I'll do is I'll aim my sights as I cut. I'm gonna have my sight aimed 
right over there. And I'll just push the power head straight to cut this. And I know that the tip is going to eventually match up with the cut over here. You know, rather than like rocking it, checking, cut that side up, come over here and just push straight with the sights right where I'm aiming. And in theory, it should line up with my hinge wood. In theory. baby. Ah! Whew. Dang it. Knocked my phone over. All right. There's a little pipsqueak tree. I'll do back up first on this one too. With my sights aiming kind of in the same spot. <laughs> Kind of a lot of wood in there. Take a little more wood out the front. Sometimes these pipsqueak ones are the annoying ones. See, it's definitely not as smooth trying to cut into the tree like that. <laughs> oh, come on. Yes. Ooh. Oh, come on. Stinking phone fell over again. That one's a little tangly. It might get hung up. I might need to. I might need to be a slash and dash. I don't know. Maybe it'll come free, but we'll see.
Oh, what do you like that? One more to go. All right, biggest and juiciest for last. This one actually leans back kind of hard. I gotta shoot that gap again. But it's easier this time because it's further away. I got more momentum, less likely I'll get hung up if I miss. It does lean back, so it's, it's actually kind of harder. <laughs> There's the stump, about a third of the way in, 10% holding wood, consistent across. Very little broken limbs. I'm pretty happy with that, honestly. Pretty happy with that. You know, I did that one video, it was like the idiots with chainsaw ones. I mean, there was a bigger tree than this, but I had a really shallow face and I ran out of wedges. And uh, I don't know, I guess I don't have anything to say except that this one went well and that one didn't. <laughs> so, so there you go. All right, here's another one. This is a oh by the way tree on my way out. <laughs> The guy wants this one done too. So this one, it actually leans back pretty good. It's green, which means the wood is stronger, but it's also heavier to lift. I'm gonna have to wedge it. I'm gonna use my Husky because the bar's a little longer. This is a 36. And it just, I feel a little safer, even if it's only like 1% safer, it's worth using the longer bar just because it's a little easier to make the cut. I mean, the house is, they're building house like right behind this. And uh, you probably can't tell the video. It does lean back a little bit. Anyways, one more tree. I'm gonna use my 395. Five cc's bigger and four inches longer. So let's get after it and then we're done. It's kind of a big tree, but it was so much easier to clean up the Dutchman's with the square ground chain than with the hexa chain. Tiny, t like eighth of an inch, maybe Dutchman right there. I think, I think it's okay. Maybe I'll touch it up a little bit, but I think we're about ready for the back cut. Oh yeah, look at that. 
it. Just one whop and the Dutchman's gone. All right, bang this thing over. I really don't want to be low on my back cut because then I've got to really lift the tree up and over. Whereas if you're parallel, you just got to push it a little, lift it a little, a little bit, you know? Yeah, it'll work. <laughs> yeah? yeah. <laughs> it'll go. Good job. Thank you. Yeah, well, this one's down. I was nervous about that one, but with the, the house there and whatnot. You know, if you go back and watch that, like, Idiots with Chainsaw videos or the big Sitka spruce I removed a few months ago, you know, I really knew at the time, like, man, you know, I'm so used to doing, like, tight quarter removals. I've been doing a lot more falling stuff lately, and I've really been trying to do more logging and just going, like, to the Redwoods and up with, you know, Two Line Timber Company, just trying to logged cut timber just a little bit it's amazing how much it's helped you know like just repetition you know over this last year i feel like i've gotten a lot better at lining up my cuts you know it's nice to be 12 years in and still feel like i'm getting better you know um i mean i have a lot of wedges in here it's just kind of for safety but it actually went over pretty easily i've really learned not to tweak the saw with the square chain you really have to let the chain do the work and that's how you stay in the same curve if you tweak on the power head at all you cut new curves with that chain i'm really happy with how that went you know a few years ago i wouldn't have even tried it i would have wanted another guy i would have put a rope in it we would have pulled it over with a rope i never would have even considered just wedging trees like this over because i just hadn't really seen it done much to be honest so it just feels good to really work hard on something and feel like you're you're making progress sometimes my cuts just really don't line up and i get frustrated but i keep trying it'd be easy for me to pretend like that i'm just really good at falling trees but instead i go you know i'm better at climbing than i am falling i really want to get better and over time by working on that i actually do get better and you know a piece of advice that not that you asked for my advice but you know a lot of times i see guys they it just, as soon as they think that they're the best, they're just like done getting better. They'll never get better. As soon as, once they think like, hey, I'm really good at this, that's just as good as they're ever gonna be. It's the guys who are like curious, who wanna learn, who keep trying new things, who keep trying to get better. They're the ones that go further in this industry from what I can tell. So all I'm saying is I still got a long ways to go. I'm no timber faller, but it just feels good to work on something, recognize that there's room for improvement. And then 
observe the improvement and it, it just feels good. But hey, yeah, check this chain out. So here's my square tooth on my Husky. Cuts super smooth, cuts fast. And look at this, I, I did not rock this chain. And look at the top, top of this chain. See how it's all shiny? Look at these teeth. This is burnt pitch. This is what the chain looks like when it's dull. You'll have this dark stuff, and that is, that's the teeth getting really hot. It, this happens if your A, your saw's not oiling, or B, your teeth are dull. It heats up the sap and the pitch and the wood, and it chars it to the top of the tooth, and that's why you get that dark line in there. That's probably one of the easiest ways to tell if the saw is dull from a glance is these black marks, but this is not dull. This did not hit any rocks. I think that this chain just hammers the wood so hard that it just gets hot. I mean, there, I didn't hit any dirt, there are no nicks. It's still sharp, but you can just tell this chain is getting way hotter than this one. This one's just slicing through the wood. This one is more like pounding through the wood. I don't know. So it's interesting. It cuts fast, but it's very aggressive. Also, the rakers are not that low. I mean, they're, they're really not that low, and this is really grabby. The rakers, the, these rakers right here, you can see, you probably can't tell. The, these rakers are at 50 thousandths and these are at 30 thousandths. So this tooth is actually grabbing a bigger bite and pulling it and it's smoother. This is 30 thousandths and this is wah, wah, wah. Got the low raker blues, even though the rakers are not that low on this saw. I don't know, it's just, it's just interesting. It does cut fast, but from my observation, it's not as smooth of an experience. It's not as easy to clean up your Dutchman's. It cuts laser beam straight though, so that is nice. Probably really good if you got a lot of firewood to buck. This is probably a great chain. A lot of timber to fall, this would be uh, better, you know? But this is like way, way easier. So anyways, there's just some continued thoughts on the, the still uh, hexa chain. This was actually a really interesting day for me. So hopefully you liked that video. Please like and subscribe to this YouTube channel. I'd really appreciate it. And I'll talk to you guys later. Look at my poor car. Look how ridiculous this is. <laughs> my Jetta. I got three big saws, a top handle. I've got a GRCS back there. Gas and oil, all my falling stuff, bunch of files. Look, I got like all my climbing gear, all my... <laughs> like all my rigging gear i mean this this car is just this is ridiculous this i got a big shot in here i got a pv i got a pv in my jetta this is just ridiculous i should really get a truck but but <laughs> but it's working this thing is like 50 miles to the gallon but just how absurd is this like i got so much gear in here i'm ready to i'm ready to rock and roll baby i don't need a truck i got i got the jetta i got my camera stuff i got all my filming stuff like it's behind the scenes action this is <laughs> all my filming stuff <laughs> Yeah, pretty ridiculous. All right, now the video's over. I just wanted to show you my, <laughs> my ridiculous Jetta. I need to get a trailer for it. That's what I need. That'd be awesome.